Hey guys, Lindsay here with Storybook Family Farm. So today I thought I would bring you guys along as I make some homemade apple cider vinegar. Um, I was planning on shooting a video outside today, but it is rainy and it is dreary, so the lighting in here is terrible. Um, the joys of having a fixer-upper, I suppose. So eventually there will be some better lighting in here, um, probably in the next couple weeks, but I gotta work with what I got. Um, so I live in Ohio and it is actively um, apple season. So a lot of places you can easily go to orchards and get apples that are labeled as deer apples or cider apples or just labeled as seconds. Um, so we frequently go to flea markets at this time of year to get the apples that are labeled as seconds um, to make applesauce, to make apple wine, and to can apples and also so that way I can make um, like a year's worth supply of apple cider vinegar for us. So I do bake bread at farmer's markets and apple cider vinegar is actually one of the ingredients inside of my bread. Um, and I also like to use the apple cider vinegar for cleaning things. Um, and at different times of the year, we actually give a little bit of apple cider vinegar to all of our animals. So we go through a few gallons a year of apple cider vinegar. And with the rate of inflation, the way that things are so expensive all the time, and we have always been a pretty low income family. So we always have tried to maximize every last little bit of every single like food that we have or anything of the sort. So I actually make the apple cider vinegar from apple scraps. So we've been working on processing through quite a bit of apples um, in the past like week or so. So I've been saving the apple scraps in a bowl. Um, when it is not apple season, but we still continue to eat apples um, out of season. My wife used to always take them to work when she was working in a different job. She would take two to three apples with her to work every day as a snack. So we were like accumulating a lot of cores. So I used to actually put them in like sandwich bags and then stick them in the freezer. So then that way when it came time to, you know, do something with them, I had enough to make a gallon of apple cider vinegar at a time. So that's, you know, one easy way if you don't want to buy a big massive amount of apples at one time to make vinegar, you can do it that way. You also don't have to make it in a gallon jar, but that's how I choose to do it because I have quite a few gallon jars um, with these plastic lids that are great for fermenting because they don't screw on they're actually slightly too big so they just set on top so then the gases can still leak out um, so with the apples i have not only just regular cores i just throw them in there but um what we had done with this batch of apples was we actually peeled them and then diced them up and then canned them so that way i can use them for the apple cinnamon bread that i make that i also sell at the farmer's market so any of the um, peels you can use them as well so basically it makes it so there is virtually no waste at all from the apples that you are buying. Um, and if you are buying apples to make like apple cider with, um, you can actually use once they're already mashed and stuff through make, through the process of making cider. Because how that works is it just you crank it down a, like a vice type thing and it squeezes all the apples into basically a, like a, a mashed up kind of yuckiness. Um, you can actually use that as well to make apple cider vinegar. I have not done it that way because I've just always, you know, used the byproduct of what we have. Instead of just throwing it outside for the chickens to eat, I figure I should do this with it. Now, if I have pieces, parts that are really super bad, the chickens and the turkeys and that, they get it. But when I don't have pieces that are real bad, I use them for this. Um, so that's about as full as I'm going to get this jar right now. So you just set the one aside and then you give it a nice hefty shake to kind of let things settle down so that way you can see how much space there is. So I do have a wee bit more space. I'm just going to throw a couple more handfuls in here and then I'm going to grab just a small amount of sugar, just regular white granulated sugar is what we use, it's what we have. Um, so I just use about a teaspoon of that. That is actually not a necessary step, but it does help with the fermentation to go faster. Um, so then you just pour in. This is just regular old tap water. It's cold. It is not hot. Do not use hot water. Um, unless if you're using like frozen apples, then I suppose you could use hot water, but it's kind of just a waste of electricity to use that. So, and then I just fill it to about the shoulder area of the jar because as this breaks down and ferments, um, there will be gases that come up and then sometimes the liquid will bubble. Um, so if you fill it too full, 
then you have you run the risk of it actually overflowing on the counter. So then you just put your lid on it and I just sort of swirl it around a little bit on the counter just so then that way the everything gets hit with water and then the sugar dissolves a little bit. Um, so, and then like with this, I'll, this fountain here, I'll probably grab a half gallon jar because we do have a few of those and I'll actually make some more apple cider vinegar so we can get this bowl out of the fridge. Now, when the apple cider vinegar is all finished, um, this is what the end product will look like. Now this here is a batch, let me move this so I can get closer to you guys. This is a batch that I actually started, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago. I've just left it on the counter. I haven't had time to take care of it, to strain it out, and then to pack, like to bottle it up. Um, so it won't hurt anything actually to leave it out on the counter. However, what I'm going to do is see this like white stuff right in here. That is the mother from the um, apple cider vinegar. So if you've ever been at the store and you see like the fancy pants, all organic um, apple cider vinegar with the mother, and you see this gross frothy looking thing around there, you can actually use that and make basically jump start the next batch of apple cider vinegar. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just take a spoon in here after I'm done filming and pull out some of this white stuff that's in here and then add it to my new jar here just because that'll make it so instead of it taking like three weeks for the apple cider vinegar to be fully done, it can be done in like a week or so. Um, now it doesn't hurt anything to let it sit for longer and stuff, but it is nice because you can just keep reusing that white and stuff because it'll also... Once you package up your bottle up your vinegar, then that um, the mother will still be in it, um, and you can consume that. It's not bad for you or anything of the sort. It is kind of a gross, yucky texture, and it looks gross. But you can actually just leave that in the vinegar, and then just use that to jumpstart every next batch of vinegar that get vinegar that you get. So whenever I'm done with a bottle of vinegar, there's always like a little bit of like kind of it looks almost like sediment that's at the bottom. I always save that for my next batch because it will, like it has all the, I don't know the science behind fermenting, but it has all like the bacteria thingies or something and the yeast cultures and all that, all that fun jazz. Um, it has all that in it to basically really jumpstart the um, effects of breaking it down and turning it into vinegar. Um, I will in the future do a video on how to make wine. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comment section below. Um, but one side note is, if you are going to make wine, you cannot have vinegar going at the same time because what will happen is when you stir the vinegar, which by the way, you should stir the vinegar the first like few days, otherwise mold will get on top. Forgot to tell you that. Um, so when you stir the vinegar, you naturally, every time as soon as you open up the jar, um, it'll actually like release the spores of the vinegar into the air and then it can contaminate wine, turning any batch of wine that you have into vinegar which is a really big bummer when you do like a six gallon batch of wine and it all turns into vinegar. Kind of a pain. But um, yeah, so anyways, like I was just saying about the stirring. With any ferment, with any ferment, you wanna make sure that it stays below the liquid level. And since you can't fill this up all the way yet, um, you do wanna take a spoon like every day. Um, you could just do it in the morning or at night, or if you really are anal about it, you could do it morning and night to give it a little bit of stir and push it down underneath the water. Um, the fruit is going to take like, turn different colors, as you can see the difference between the finished batch here and the non-finished batch. Um, it is going to look slightly different and it will have a cloudy effect because it is not filtered out. So it will not look exactly like the vinegar you get at the store, unless if you're used to buying the organic with the mother, then it'll look very similar to that. But so if you guys have any questions, please leave it in the comment section down below um, or any comments of how you guys do it differently. All right, thanks for watching. Have a good one, guys.